pub into the grand final. Gary, congratulations. 1953 is the last time Geelong made consecutive grand finals. That's four. Mate, it's a great job. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. I'm aware of that, mate. Uh, all I wanted to do was uh, win today, and uh, we achieved that through a lot of hard work. And the guys, I think, really were well rewarded from having that week's break and they were fresh in the conditions today. You must have been floating on air when you came here tonight. What about the performance you've seen so far from Carlton? Are your feet starting to touch the ground? Oh yeah, the feet touch the ground pretty quickly after the game, Bruce, because you realise that that just gets us to play for another week and what I saw tonight or have seen so far is that Carlton seem to be moving the ball with a lot more fluency into their forward zone and uh, really there's a lot of North Melbourne players that uh, are their engine, so to speak, have been quite uh, quiet tonight. Gary, just take us through the uh, procedure for the week. Well, what we've got tomorrow morning, Jared, is that we've got a uh, team photograph and we're actually getting a lot of the boys to come down tomorrow and uh, they're getting a massage because I think that's important to try and get the body up and uh, as fresh as we can possibly get it very early in the week. We'll uh, have a swim on Monday night, a light night again Tuesday, and then we'll be back on deck for a final hit out on Thursday. Conan, you've played in many grand finals with Hawthorne. How do you find the difference now in the pressure with the build-up as a coach? Oh, I haven't really noticed a lot different, uh, Russ. What we, uh, what you probably do is you're not actually getting out there and running around and uh, expelling your energy that way. But, you know, I've tried to uh, remain fairly relaxed about it and uh, get the boys well prepared with uh, my support staff. And, uh, you know, that's the best way I've sort of been able to handle it so far and just try and keep on top of it. Gary, so, sorry, Russell, I wanted to ask Gary about Waverley Park. So much talked about it. You haven't said much about it. You won a grand final out there in 1991. Do you think it's a bit of a, a myth uh, that, you know, teams have struggled to come off it, Gary? Yeah, I think it is, Bruce. Like, it didn't concern us one way or the other, and uh, we really wanted to achieve the week's break, which we got that. And uh, we, we were very, very fresh, I think, leading into today's game. And if the conditions were going to be a hard slog, I felt we uh, should have been able to just get over Richmond. But, look, I think it gets beat up in the media a hell of a lot, and uh, there's certain people that say a lot of things about Waverley, but the condition of the ground is really terrific now, and it really was just a bit slippery at times, but I thought overall it held up very, very well. And Gary, the other one that we'll talk about all week is the fact that you've won by 82 points and 89 points. You needed to have a hard game going in. What do you think of that one? <laughs> well, again, it's only as, as hard as what you can probably do on the day, and really there's a lot of boys tonight that uh, are saying the game was hard enough, and you know, when we look at it, if we can just keep persisting and, and really get on top of things and uh, keep the opposition quiet, at the end of the day, if it comes out like that, well, that's just how it is. But, uh, you know, we've had two good finals runs and we should go into next week uh, with some confidence. Gaz, a um, bit of a smile on the face when Peter Dean took a bit of a tumble and also Fraser Brown with a crook ankle. What do you think of that? Oh, well, that's what football's all about, Russ. <laughs> Gary, a lot will be focused on the likes of, uh, I guess, your star players, Gary Ablett and uh, Gary Hocking. Uh, Barnes, but really uh, Geelong has improved this year with uh, a lot of lesser lights coming to the fore. Yeah, well, we've tried to uh, get that right from the start, Jared, and I think it's been important that we try and take some of that pressure off those guys that you, you mentioned, and it's important for the club's point of view to improve, and really when you look at players like Ablett and Hocking and uh, you know, Hinkley and, of course, Brownless, etc., they've been doing it for a long time, so it's important that the other boys uh, hold their end up, and that's to work hard and, and bring the enthusiasm and and, uh, the improvement that youth does give you and I think it's important from the overall structure of the side. You staying to the end, Gary, tonight? Oh, we'll just see how it goes, Bruce, and, uh, you know, at the moment, what, Carlton's holding a five-goal uh, lead or six-goal lead, so, yeah, we'll just work that out as the night progresses, I think. Gary, we really do appreciate your time tonight. It's first class. That's a pleasure, Bruce. And congratulations. Thanks not quite... Much. The job not quite done yet, Ezzy, but you're nearly there, son. Oh, well... Go, 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 it's all over, Bruce. Oh, that'll do. Coach is grey hair. Ah, uh, he's looking good. Gary is. Malcolm Blight was looking good in 1989, his first season. We take a break. Back with the second half after this. The time clock is ticking towards the end of the season, but there's still plenty of excitement to be had Friday nights on Four Quarters. How does it happen? You're down in a mine, or painting a sign, or strain until you thought you'd burst. You sure got a thirst. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer, and the best cold beer is big. You're leading the band, or lending a hand. You can get it any old how. Matter of fact, I got it now. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer, and the best cold beer is big, big bitter.